Hello and welcome back to another video and today as you can see we're here going back to MotoGP 21. Now I did a video similar to this around about a year ago probably now on MotoGP 20. Now for me that is probably the best modern era game to be fair. I also quite like MotoGP 24. 24 has been a big step in the right direction but I went back at that point to MotoGP 20 to see if it still holds up because it's one of the most regarded games in the modern era and MotoGP 21 is also up there. It's sort of 19, 20, 21, most people will say those three, one of those three is the best. But there is a certain other YouTuber that has a particular fondness for MotoGP 21. MotoGP 21 is by far the best GP game Milestone has made. If you disagree, you're wrong. Now back to the video. So you've heard Dill's opinion, now it's time for mine. Let's get straight into the game. So straight away, we're back into the old 2D menu. This is the last GP game that had the 2D menu after this MotoGP 22. It went back to 3D like it was in MotoGP 18. We've got the eSports season from 2022 telling us to buy MotoGP 2022, so they really don't want us on this game. But we'll go straight into quick mode. Apparently, I have a Grand Prix already loaded. Let's have a look what this is. Oh, it doesn't tell you, actually. It's Qatar, but I don't know what it is. So I thought it might tell me what rider it is because it does these days, but... Either way, we'll, uh, we'll go into a new Grand Prix. Uh, why not? Actually, you know what? I will do time... No, I nearly went to Championship there. We'll do time trial first. You know what kind of bothers me about this screen is that it was obviously never updated because I'm pretty sure that's the 2020 livery with Jack Miller's 43 on it. Also, it's so pixelated. I don't know if it's going to come across on the video, but the image is such low quality. So strange. So, of course, you get into the rider selection screen and you kind of forget how much has changed since 2021. Obviously, the main thing here on the screen is the fact that Suzuki was still in MotoGP back in 2021, but also the fact that Mir is first on the menu here. He was the reigning champion going into this season. I mean, you kind of forget he's even a world champion. You don't forget it so much about in Moto3, but you kind of forget he's actually a MotoGP world champion. 2020 was just such a strange season. For me, this was his best season in 2021. I think it was much better than his 2020 season. Obviously, you've got the Repsol Honda near the top as well. Very strange. Yamaha near the top as well. So all the bikes, really, that are either not existent or really slow these days, right near the top. Ducati down further towards the bottom. Rossi still being in the sport. A lot of things are different, but we're not really here to analyse the lineup if you want to see that. Obviously, of course, you can just go and watch the 2021 season. We are here to talk about the game, and who am I going to play as for this first time trial? It's got to be Fabio Quattararo, world champion of the year. The last time he had a good bike. So I'm going to head down to the track and relive the physics of this game. You can see all these shots are like the exact same. I'm actually surprised that the game doesn't look graphically as nice. You kind of think every year that you don't notice much of a difference, but coming back a couple of years, it does look a little bit more. The lighting isn't as realistic. The colors are really popping for some reason. Like they don't look very realistic. Like it's almost like you've got the sort of the saturation set wrong. It's a little bit strange, but here we are in the garage, of course. Usual cutscenes taken over at this point, although, of course, main difference being that the uh, the faces are the old model. Yeah, you can see Fabio looking pretty different there than he does in modern day. But let's head to the track now if we're looking at these cutscenes that are the exact same. Wow, that is so strange going into the first corner. The bike feels so light. Oh, okay. There is definitely a bit of uh, input lag here. Wow, okay. That is, <laughs> that is strange. That is so strange. And I've cut the corner and okay they've got the spk 22 curbs that's uh it's good to know to be fair i did go am i actually able to get back on the bike oh of course there was the, there was the recovery i completely forgot about the recovery it seems so long since they had it this was the that was the big feature of this game wasn't it the the rider running to the bike and then they had it in 22 and then they just got rid of it it was so bizarre really wasn't there like something to do with um like brakes or something for this game as well there was there was not much to ride home about for this game i seem to remember that but the biggest thing they had was the bike retrieval, which was quite cool, but it's not going to make you buy the game. It's, uh, it's actually the biggest marketing thing. It's definitely a bit weak. The career mode was just copy-paste from MotoGP 20, from what I remember. So yeah, I, I remember at this time, I wasn't actually too fond of this game at the time. Like I said earlier on, it is quite a popular one amongst uh, different people, but yeah, it's not particularly... It wasn't one of my favourites at the time, but we will see. I'll just do a couple of laps here in time trial, then probably jump into a race with the AI and... See what they're like, reminisce a little bit. But so far, the physics feel terrible, like really bad. I mean, MotoGP 24 has been a really big step in the right direction in terms of the physics for me. But this just feels like uncrashable almost. So, so bizarre. I mean, the, the input is quite different. I felt like there was a bit of a delay at first, but I don't know if it's just because the bike turns so weird. I think there is a bit of an input lag. Can't quite put my finger on it. To be honest, though, 
I find that with all the milestone games. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you sort of have that same thing. For me, every milestone game, whether it's Ride, MotoGP, whatever, they always feel like they've got a massive like input lag. Like you put the input in and it's a good maybe quarter of a second at least before you kind of notice it actually taking effect in game. And that does take a bit of getting used to. But I'll tell you what, one of the big things I always remember about this game was the rear end on corner entry just coming around. And yeah, it it's definitely is still a thing. So I've decided to jump into a race now. I think I've done enough in time trials to get a rough idea of the physics. I think it'll be better if I'm actually maybe battling some other bikes to get a bit of a feel of it. I might play with the electronics. Also on a Honda now, so that probably will be a little bit uh, harder to handle. But I'll tell you what, like looking at the grid cutscenes and stuff, like this game hasn't aged very well at all. It's quite ugly looking. I remember the face models, obviously they made a big step from this game to, I think it was 22 is when they did it. And that was like a big thing at the time. I remember people saying they couldn't tell the difference, but you certainly can. But we've jumped into a race here at the Red Bull Ring, because of course this is the last game where we didn't have the, the chicane, if I'm not mistaken. So I thought we'd give that a bit of a go, because it's pretty much the only track you're not going to get in the current games, aside from the Kimi Ring, and I wasn't going to play the Kimi Ring. I'm surprised the Lace is on the front row back in 2021. I mean, it wasn't exactly that competitive that year, but anyway, then the lights are on. Waiting for them to go out here for the Austrian Grand Prix. Lights down, away we go. And off the line we go. Down, well, I was about to say down towards turn one, but up towards turn one, really. Got, wow, uh, whoa! <laughs> Did you see that on the curb then? It absolutely went. The curb physics, definitely a bit messed up in this game then. So I can see where SCPK22 potentially gets it from, but... I braked for the chicane even that's not there. What am I doing? I'm not even paying attention. I was looking at the graphics on the left-hand side because they look quite different. The name looks quite far over to the right. Everything, the colours, like I said before, just look so strange. Like I'm actually really shocked about how badly this uh, this game's aged graphically. I kind of thought they would look really similar to the current games and that's how you always picture it in your head, but not at all. don't know what that AI doing, by the way, they're going to the inside. But at the minute, we're still in last place, and I've got them on like 90% difficulty as well, so it's not like they're, uh, they're particularly fast. I've got strict tramp limits on, though, so I've picked up a tramp limits warning there, so I've got to be careful. I see the suspension is really going for it as well. There's like hitting bumps constantly. So look at the rear the, the rear swing arm, guys, as I go through some of these corners. It's absolutely jumping up. Well, actually, it wasn't too bad through there, but the first couple of parts, if you want to rewind the video and have a look, but the first left-hander, what am I doing, though, on the... The grass there. I'm getting gapped here by the 90 AI. It's not good at all. So we go into the last corner, drifting the rear in there. That is just the way you have to play this game because the rear is always coming around on you. I mean, I remember at the time playing this, I found that quite uncontrollable, but now it's not so bad because the rear obviously does still step out on you now, but you get a lot more feedback from it. As we go past Luca Marini and someone, then around the outside of La Quona as well. Bike seems to bike quite a bit if you grab the brake a bit more. It definitely starts to sort of weirdly move across the circuit and snap a little bit. We'll see it at the top of this hill because this time we'll be approaching it at the correct speed. As we go past Salvadori and Petrucci and our teammate Paul. And you can see that even the AI are doing it. Like Enea Bastianini as we've just clattered into Enea. Sorry Enea. Absolutely punted him out the way. A crash though for Laquona and somebody else as well. Not sure who it was. But down on the deck, and you can see actually in this game, of course, this was the game where we had the realistic respawn times. If you had the bike recovery on, the AI would actually stay on the ground for quite a while. Let me pick up another chat limits warning. Definitely not riding super clean in this one, but yeah, like I was saying on the approach to the hairpin, look at Bastianini as well. It's just like the suspension is so soft in this game. You can see how much the, the bikes are moving up and down, even like around a very smooth part of the track like this. It's so bizarre. The game does feel quite floaty. Maybe that's why it's just not... But it's probably why it feels like you have so much grip because the suspension is just absorbing everything. So as you go into the corners, you can see how much it's moving. It's so much travel. And I think that's why the curbs are a bit broken because actually I'm sticking to the curbs as I go on them. So you know what? We give them a hard time sometimes for not innovating game to game. But this is a game from three years ago. It is like night and day difference. Night and day difference. If you go and play... F1 2020 or something like that, or F1 2021. It's not that different to the current F1 game, and that's quite a testament, really, that Milestone have made a big step, especially when this is considered to be one of the better MotoGP games. But we're making a move here on an Air Bashanini on this final lap. Up the inside we go of our teammate again. We're going to career into the back of Petrucci. And down we go. We'll use a rewind there, but that was something I faced a lot in this game. I know I got way too hot in there, by the way. That was obviously completely on me. But into here like this... See, the rear stepping out, this is what I meant earlier, where that was my overriding thought of the game. I think it's when you push 
the bike too much into the corner. Also, we were absolutely nowhere near hitting when we actually made contact there. We would have clattered into the back of him, don't get me wrong, but that's still a thing on this game, so, uh, on the current game, so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna hold 20, 21 against it too much, but we'll make another go at that corner break a bit earlier, but you can see the rear just slides in to the corner. We've hit Petrucci, we've not... Okay, <laughs> that was... That was uh, I was actually gonna try to use the rewind, but unfortunately, I got up to... Uh, I left it too long, and once you're down on the ground, that is it, so we'll pick up the bike. As you can see, the other guys that crashed on the previous lap just coming through now, Savadori and uh, I think it looks like Laquona. I've, I've jumped onto Portimao, and I completely forgot that there was just no audio for the cutscene at Portimao, Merge 21, because Portimao was a new track, and they obviously hadn't got the commentators to record it. So, so bizarre. But here we are then. Let's see, can we get a better race this time? Let's and away we go. Of course, we've got Jean Mir, the reigning world champion this time. You can see there is the, uh, the Mir with the one in the middle of the, uh, the M and the R. So we go down towards turn one. Has been a much better start as we go in, and again, the rear just breaks traction, and into the side of Polis Bagra we go. But yeah, this is bringing the memories back. That was, because uh, I wasn't particularly late on the brakes there either. But again, I saw on the approach to turn one how much the suspension was moving. It's obviously hard to see the front forks as much. Maybe if I have a look back as we go into the next corner. As the bike dives down at the inside of Rossi, and another crash. Right, we're giving this one another go because that was absolutely appalling. So here we go once again. Obviously, real life, Mir was really, really strong in this race. So we've got to try and replicate that as we go down towards the first corner. Again, I'll go for the outside pass, but hopefully this time we don't get absolutely caught out. Okay, we get a trial of this warning. The rear again breaks traction, but fair, maybe I did just break too late that time. I will maybe put a bit of responsibility on myself. See the AI? A bit more fanned out across the track potentially there than you see these days. I think sometimes they, they are a bit more single file. Because I'll have to say, I don't know what they're doing there, why they've all moved to the left like that. I did notice that at, uh, at at Austria as well, that on some of the straights they all just seem to move to the left. Which I guess is maybe them trying to pretend that it's like the... In real life, sometimes the bike will wheelie and the riders kind of let it move across the track because it's faster than fighting it. And trying to bring the front wheel back down because then you just bring the, the bike back across for the braking zone. I think actually it allows you to brake later as well because the way you sort of load up the tire but and obviously it's like they're trying to fake that through some of these corners and they are just for no reason effectively just moving to one side of the track and again look at the rear end i mean come on you try to tip it in i am remembering my frustrations with that because again i'm not anywhere near the limit obviously i've just jumped back on the game for the first time and i'm already getting frustrated by how much the rear just comes around and just stops you from being able to turn in as we go through turn 13 not much torque in the bottom end there so we try to pick up the power the inside of petrucci we're going to try and go around the outside of him now so if it's a p18 we're having a really good scrap here as the, as the world champion right towards the back got savadori polis Vagro in front of us then there's rossi as well mark marquez pretty far down the order while well, look at this slipstream advantage so you can see that the ai definitely scaled to the straights Actually, the more of this I play, the more I do feel like it is very similar to SBK22. Like, I mean, I remember at the time saying it was basically copy-paste, but the AI seemed to be very similar. The curb seemed to be quite similar. The rear end coming round on you all the time into the corners seems very similar. So, yeah, and, and the menu is like the exact same in SBK22 as well. It just, I mean, I remember saying that at the time when the game came out, and I, I can see where I was coming from with that. It looks really weird. The, uh, this is the Craig Jones. Yeah, Craig... Uh, Craig Jones corner. It almost looks like the track is transparent when you're coming down the hill. Again, I'm actually, like, this is one of the big takeaways for me. I'm really surprised by how bad this game looks now, compared to the current one, current one. Like, I thought, they all oh, okay, I've just not Savadori off. Whoops. That's no penalties for that in this game, though, so that's fine. Only track limits in this one. Okay, then, we've got a lap and pretty much two corners to go. There's points in front of Valentino Rossi. There's also Mark Marcus ahead of him, so this could get spicy with those two on track together. But come on, can we beat Rossi here? Can we get in the points? 36 versus 46, and well, okay, you can see again, they are scaled to the straight line. I know I've got it on 90% difficulty, but surely if you're playing against the AI on 90% difficulty, you kind of actually want to have some fun, and that is not fun, just blasting them on the straight. You did also see again, into turn one there, they'd moved fully to the right inside the track, which is something they kind of do on the exit of that corner, uh, exit of the last corner here because of the wheelie. But they just completely, for no reason, effectively move to the right-hand side of the track. And then obviously just have to move back to the left and they sort of glide across the circuit. So we've got a few corners to go as I go on the green once again. Mark Marquez just in front of us. Actually realistic to the, the real life 2021 put him out race again because Mark was right on the back of Alex still literally at the last corner and overtook him in that entire race. Editor biker here. That was 2022. I was talking absolute rubbish there. Doesn't look like his AI is going to be able to follow in his footsteps, but we have managed to best Rossi this time. We have managed to get one point out of this video, so 
fair play to me. You can see, actually, uh, we are underneath our best time as well. We've picked up two challenge warnings at the same corner. That seems fair. But up towards the line, then. Are we going to beat the Marquez brothers? Because the, the line's in the wrong place, isn't it, on this game? And Mark actually did get Alex to the line. So, to be fair, 10 out of 10 realism there for Milestone. So yeah, a very, very interesting one there and certainly changed my perspective on the game because you forget these things and to be honest, actually having played this, I actually do appreciate what we have now a lot more with MotoGP 24 because sometimes you, you look at it, you, you know, you play every game and there isn't much of a step from game to game, especially graphically, but you can see jumping even three years back into the past, there is so, so much difference. Physics wise as well, the physics do seem very, very weird in this game. Obviously, I'm not doing a full deep dive into it, so you're not going to get all of the, the feelings on the physics, but it did seem to me very much like the suspension was moving a lot. Rear end just steps out for no reason on entry. I know it does still do that to this day, but it just glides and you can't get it back, whereas I feel like it's much more of a controlled slide in the in the current games and you can kind of bring it in and it can go the other way as well, which didn't seem to happen as much here. Stoppies, definitely a thing. I do remember that from, from the time people complaining about that. But yeah, this is one of the uh, the most popular games, one of the most uh, well-loved MotoGP games. So let me know, guys, in the comments below. What are your memories of MotoGP 21? Maybe you haven't played MotoGP 21. If you haven't, let me know what is your favorite game, and we can do something similar with that as well. I can go back and have a bit of play of that one. But I hope you have enjoyed that video. If you are new to my channel, please do like the video and subscribe because it really helps me out. And of course, it's a win-win as you get some more MotoGP game content in your subscription feed but i hope you do enjoy the rest of your day and i shall see you in the next one